Okay, welcome back to the Fanish, Wilcom Fanish Inquisition at Westercon 68. Uh, we are now entering the 2017 segment of our uh, Inquisition. Uh, we are going to go in alphabetical order as agreed to by the bidders. Therefore, the ordering will be um, DC, Helsinki, Montreal. There is no representative from Japan here that we have been made aware of. Um, each uh, person, each group will get 12 minutes. Uh, that's six for presentation and six for Q&A. Um, we will start with a DC. Hello folks, I'm Warren Buff. I'm here with DC 17. We're bidding to bring the Worldcon to Washington DC, August 16th through 20th of 2017 in the Marriott Wardman Park Hotel. We will be able to fit all of the Worldcon's functions in nearly all of its hotel rooms in the single facility. We have a block of 1100 rooms there at a rate of 149 a night single through quad. Uh, the function space is very well shaped to our needs. We have the nice big main room for the Hugos. We have the nice big exhibit hall for dealers and such. And we have lots of breakout rooms of various sizes for program. Uh, but even better than that, we have a ton of soft seating spaces scattered all over the hotel. The little conversations that happen on the side, you know, you want to keep talking after a panel. You meet an old friend or a favorite author and just want to get a good conversation in. Those spaces are everywhere. In the function space, in the elevator lobbies, it's a gorgeous facility for us to actually meet in. Uh, there are over 100 suites in the hotel, so the party situation is going to be absolutely set. Uh, we will be able to block out the suites on a handful of floors and take care of all of our party needs. Uh, the building is fully ADA compliant except for one little hallway with maybe a dozen rooms on it, uh, sleeping rooms. So there will be no access issues for people who need to get a wheelchair or a Moby into a room. Uh, on the subject of access, we also have Gaidet University and the uh, Library of Congress has some wonderful programs for helping the hard of hearing, uh, which is an area that we maybe haven't reached out to in the past, but it's a local resource, and that's an access issue we can spend more time addressing because the basic mobility access issues are already taken care of. Uh, the hotel is right across from the zoo stop on the red line of the metro, so if you come into Union Station or Reagan National Airport, you'll be able to take the metro directly to the hotel and get off, cross the street, you're at the hotel. And of course, it's in a real neighborhood where people live, so the two dozen restaurants across the street actually stay open nights and weekends. You know, they will not be shutting down when the business crowd goes away. Our committee is large and diverse. We've got a very broad range of fan experiences. Uh, you know, everyone from relatively new fans and local convention fans up through four past Worldcon chairs and over a dozen past division heads. So we're blending that youth and experience and have been doing so during the bid as well. Uh, one of the examples I've been telling folks about is our facilities team. We've paired up Enchanter, who does the facilities for Arisha, with Ben Yallo and even though Ben's been negotiating Worldcon facilities since before she was born, she's taken the lead. Uh, the, the various backgrounds we've got coming together mean that there isn't a part of fandom that we're going to neglect. We've got gamers, fanzine fans, uh, Whovians, art collectors, traditional lit fans. You know, we're all coming together behind this bid. Uh, Washington, D.C., of course, it, it's an easy city to get to. You know, you've got the three major airports, and between the three of them, there's usually a good price from just about anywhere. Uh, it's also well connected to the train and bus systems in the U.S., and it's easy to get around. The, the metro can take you to most of the interesting sites of the city, uh, which include hundreds of museums, monuments, historical sites. It is really a great place to visit. Uh, if you have the time to take a 
few days before or after the tour, it is absolutely worth the time. And the city also has a great fanish tradition uh, going back decades, uh, various conventions, various fan groups, uh, the local club, uh, the Washington Science Fiction Association is well behind us. And we think bringing all this together will give us a great opportunity to throw a world con for you. It's a perfectly sized hotel. 149 a night is a great rate. It's less than it was in Texas in 2013. Uh, and the city and the facility are very accessible. This is a committee ready to bring you a great world con and we'd love your vote. Uh, I'm ready for questions. That was short of, that, that was short of your time, so you're good. Um, I will now in take questions. Oh, oh, I have a question for, for all bids, so for the other two pay attention because you'll get this in a minute. Um, how will the flavors of the con, how, how will the flavors of the con be reflected in the convention? That is, if you never leave the convention, how will I know I'm in your city? Okay, for one, even if you never leave the convention site, we're going to be able to work with the local universities and the Smithsonian Institution uh, to bring in the kind of speakers that you just don't see everywhere. You're going to know you're in DC. Uh, you know, and of course, we've got our local fanish traditions uh, that our city's traditions will bleed into how we run the convention. Anyone else have a question for DC? Go. Okay, uh, as you might know, Washington, D.C. is a majority-minority city. Uh, this is the diversity question uh, that all of the groups have been asked so far. What are we going to do to reach out to people of color? And as I was saying, Washington is a majority-minority city. Uh, the basic local outreach that we do, if we apply it correctly and evenly throughout the city, you know, treat Howard University the same as Georgetown, then I believe we will do a good job of making that first contact with fans of color. I, I, I do think that the program of outreach that DETCON developed should serve as a model to us. Uh, and you know, it's going to take time to get this perfect, but I think DC is a good community to do it in. Any other questions for DC? Who will be the con chair? Uh, I will continue co-chairing with Michael Nelson if we should win the bid. Other questions for DC? Do we have or will we have an anti-harassment policy? Our sponsoring organization, the Baltimore Washington Area World Con Association already has a anti-harassment policy. It's what we used at our World Fantasy Convention. We will probably modify it a little uh, to account for things like costuming that you just don't have at World Fantasy, but it will largely be the same as what we used there. Other questions for DC? Linda. In mid-August in D.C. What, what is the weather like in August in D.C.? In, in mid-August D.C., yes, it is summer. Uh, it averages in the mid to upper 80s for a high and down around 70 for a low. Uh, obviously, that's an average. It could be higher or lower. But it's summer. It's going to be kind of hot. Uh, thankfully, we're in a single facility with really good air conditioning because we're in D.C. We know what air conditioning is. Other questions for D.C.? Kevin. I don't have an exact percentage on the humidity, but yes, it is very humid. It's probably more humid than what you're seeing right now. And that is a fact of life, and air conditioning was developed to deal with humidity. Other questions for DC? In which case, I would like to thank you very much, and we'll move on to Helsinki. Thank you.